Hello, my name is Ying Huang. My student number is 26446200. This video is about EDF5034 assignment 2. I'm going to answer four questions. The first one is, what is the educational importance of HPE learning area? At the beginning, I thought HPE literacy means to be health, to learn different kinds of sports. But after this unit, I thought it's more than what I thought. HPE helps us understand who we are and how to be active, healthy, safe, and how our actions can influence our community. HPE helps us build on different strategies we can use to make active and safe, healthy related choice. It helps uh, it helps us understand all of the things influencing the choice we make, such as the influence on friends we make, the physical activities we engage in, the risks we take, and so on. HP brings lots of benefits to students based on the Victoria curriculum. Health and physical education is the area that engages students in worthwhile learning uh, ex experience to develop skills knowledge, self-efficiency, and the disposition that will enable young people to live healthy and active lifestyle. Um, important part of HPE is the wide range of learning contexts that will provide sustainable opportunities for developing interpersonal and collaborative skills, good communication, decision-making, and goal-setting skills. HPE is contributors to, to development of resilient strategies, skills for conflicting resolutions and assertiveness. It's vitally acknowledged that an improvement in academic results when more HPE and physical activity is timetabled into the school programs. So the second question, what are the some considerations when sitting, selecting and using a healthy education resources in your teaching? Um, based on my understanding, there are several things we need to consider when we choose the resources. First, are the resources appropriate for all the students? Especially some topics are very sensitive like drugs, obesity, mental problems, or some culture, religion things. Because um, th students are from different countries, and some of them may experience the topic you are trying to teach. Some of them may have very bad experience. So it's very thoughtful to choose the right resources where the language is nice and suitable for students. Secondly, um, other resources are reliable or authority. It's easy to find the resources online, but teaching is not cut in the past paste job. When teachers choose online resources, it's important to be highly cri uh, critical and careful that information is not biased and excessive. Third, it's motivated that teachers can choose resources that challenging students' learning. Based on Vygotsky's approach, teachers and the parents need to uh, know the stage at various um, learners are at and set appropriate tests, which are not just out of which are just out of uh, out of their reach based on their current ability. If the tasks are beyond the learner's ability or too simple for learners, this cannot promote learning. It's important that teachers can choose to modify an activity from lower to higher of according to students' ability. Last but not least, it will be more effective that the resources are re relevant to students' daily lives and the parents are, can also engage in with the students because parents play an important role in, ch in children's engagement in healthy and active lifestyles, particularly, particularly for primary school age students where lifestyle choice are often reinforced through parents' modeling. The third question is, 
how do students learn in, about, and through movement? I will use the praying possible as an example to explain. So the first, learn in movement is concerned with upholding the will that movement activities, especially when looked at from the inside or particular um, participatory perspective of the moving agent are uh, in and of themselves worthwhile. Um, for example, like um, playing basketball, students um, will actually actualize themselves and uh, will realize movement of the body, like they know how to play the, uh, how to running, how to run, how to triple, how to suit, how to keep balance. Those kind of strategies they they learned uh, when they play basketball, and then the second, uh, learn about the press, learn about movement is concerned with the trans trans. Um, transmission of what may be called rational movement knowledges. It's um, largely a propositional kind and is capable of being presented in, in a discursive way according to our Arnold. So when we do the movement activity, we not only focus on how to move body, but we learn the benefits behind the activity. Like when we play in the basketball, we know it's good for our health, and uh, we people, students may feel happy after playing basketball. And uh, sometimes students can also can collect, record, and organize um, information to find out um, the which physical activities um, they can engage in to maintain the health and uh, some reasons behind those healthy uh, beca behind the, those activities can keep student can keep keep people health third one learning through the movement um according to lebron education education through the physical is part of the educational process that aim to develop extrinsic learning objective in domain such as physical, emotional, intellectual, and social aspect of an individual through participation in selected and directed physical activity. Like playing basketball students not only know how to learn the um, play skills, but they also Learn, need to learn how to communicate with each other, how to do teamwork with each other, how to, um, sometimes they may also set a new rules for the games and uh, their attitude towards the uh, success and the failure in the exams, no, in the, in the games. Those kind of the things they, are, they need to learn. So the last question is, how does your unit plan development to demonstrate your proficiencies um, in one of the graduate APTS? I chose the 1.3. Students with the diverse the linguistic, cultural, religious, and the social economic backgrounds. So in the unit plan 7, we created an activity about learning foods from different countries. As we mentioned in the unit plan, that lots of the students came from different countries and have different culture and religious background. It's vital to create an environment where students are exposed to different culture and informer information and realize that being different is normal and wish to respect each other's culture. Meanwhile, learning different culture can increase the students' confidence of understandings of different cult countries' culture and give opportunity to do strength-based learning. Students from other countries are more familiar with their own culture instead of Australian culture. Then we teach students based on their existing strength part. For example, in the class, we're not only talking about Australian food, but also Chinese and the Japanese and the Indian foods. Based on those food, we enhance students' learning about healthy food choice and being critical about foods. In this way, students can learn healthy food information based on their familiar foods instead of being confused with the foods they haven't tried or they didn't know. It's good, additionally, it's good uh, opportunity to burden students' knowledge about various foods around the world. That's all. Thank you for your time.